Hello everyone and welcome back. From the previous session itself, we have been learning about the basic interfacing components of 8085 microprocessor. In that session, we learned about the latch. In this session, we are going to learn about the tri-state buffer. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, today, from all the four different interfacing components of 8085 microprocessor, we are going to learn about the second one that is the tri-state buffer. Now the usage of tri-state buffer we already have seen. If you remember, during the organization of 8085 microprocessor and the memory, we learned that the tri-state buffer is used in the multiplexed lower order address and the data bus. Due to the presence of this, the lower order byte of the address, when it is being sent to the address decoder, doesn't flow in this direction and goes to the memory location. The tri-state buffer works as a valve. That is, it allows the data communication between the microprocessor and the memory in both the directions. However, it doesn't allow the lower order address byte to flow in this direction. Now, the primary utilization of tri-state buffer is, it is utilized for isolation when multiple devices are connected to a shared bus. And how it is done? I'll show that to you in a moment. But before that, let me emphasize on this fact that the tri-state buffer has three different states. The first state is known as logic 0. And the second state is logic 1. Now, apart from these two, it also has another state which is called high impedance state. The high impedance state is also known as the tri state, and thus it got the name the tri state buffer. So, the third or the tri state is high impedance state, and it is denoted using capital Z. Sometimes it is also called high Z. Now, if you remember, when we were studying about the binary number system, we came to know that in a TTL integrated circuit, zero is represented using the voltage level from zero volt to plus 0 0.8 volt. On the other hand, one is represented using the voltage range plus two volt till plus five volt. So basically, this range of voltage is logic zero. Whereas this range of voltage is logic 1. Now coming to the tri-state buffer, it generally handles this range, which is known as indefinite levels. Now let me remind you how the tri-state buffer works. If you see, it has two different inputs, right? Now the second input is named as enable. Now from the notation itself, I believe you have guessed why we have a bar on top of it. Because it has a bubbled input. So through this input, if we send 0, the buffer will be activated. That is, the switch inside it will be connected. Now at the input end, if 0 is being sent, that is we are sending a voltage within this range. Since the enable input is active, at the output end, we will also receive zero, that is another voltage of this particular range. And this is known as logic zero. And for that, the enable input has to be active. Additionally, when the enable input is active, at that time, if we send one, there is a voltage within this particular range at the input end. The buffer, since the switch in between is connected, will propagate that voltage to the output end as well. And this is known as the logic one, for which the enable input will also be active. Now, if the enable input is one, which is essentially inactive, as you can notice, the switch is already disconnected. In that case, if we either send zero or one, at the output end, we will receive nothing. And that's because we are providing high impedance or high resistance. Since the switch is disconnected, which specifies the greatest form of resistance. And this is known as high impedance or the tri-state and for which the enable input has to be inactive. 
Now the question is, how does all these help us treat indefinite levels? Let me explain this using an analogy. Suppose for a concert, 100 tickets were sold for a particular day. Now say on that day, there is a ticket collector standing at the gate. Now the people who are coming at the concert with a valid ticket, the ticket collector is marking them as one, that is, present. However, for the people who bought the tickets but didn't show up, the ticket collector is marking them as absent or zero. Now it might so happen that there are people who have arrived with an expired or a valid ticket but the ticket is for another day. For that, the ticket collector is not going to let them pass, right? Now in this analogy, the ticket collector is actually working as the enable input. In a tri-state buffer, the enable input controls whether the buffer generates a definite logic level or it remains in the high impedance state. Now the people who are showing up with the valid tickets are resembling the logic 1. That is, a voltage level which is clearly in the logic 1 range. On the other hand, the people who didn't show up, they are similar to logic 0. Just as the buffer would output a logic 0, if the voltage level is within the logic 0 range. Finally, the people with the expired ticket or with tickets for another day are the individuals who are in a state of limbo. That is, they are not allowed but they are also not marked absent. They are like the indefinite voltage level that don't result in a clear logic state. The ticket collector restricts them from entering which is similar to the buffer being in the high impedance state. I believe now you understand how tri-state buffers are used to handle the indefinite levels. Now let me show you how it is utilized for isolation when multiple devices are connected to a shared bus. Say with the microprocessor, via the data line, multiple devices are connected. We are naming them as device 1, device 2, device n. Now if you notice, all of them are connected using tri-state buffers. So when device 1 wants to communicate with the 8085 microprocessor, the enable input of the tri-state buffer will be reset to 0 and at the same time for all the other devices, the enable input will be set to 1 inactivating all the communication channels for these devices. That is, for that time being with the microprocessor, only the device 1 can communicate. And this is how, using the tri-state buffer, isolation is provided when multiple devices are connected to a shared bus. Now with 8085 microprocessor, two different types of tri-state buffers are used. At first, 74LS5244 and 72LS5245. Now 74LS5244 is actually unidirectional tri-state buffer whereas 74LS5245 is a bidirectional tri-state buffer. Now what is the difference between these two? Well, coming to unidirectional tri-state buffers, these can transmit signals in one direction. That is, from their input to their output. They are like the one-way streets where the data flows from the source to the destination without the ability to send back. This is useful for the situations where data only needs to move in a single direction, such as from the keyboard to the CPU. On the other hand, the bidirectional tri-state buffers can transmit signals in both the directions allowing them to act as a two-way street, they can both send and receive data. This makes them ideal for communication where traffic handling is needed in both the directions, such as communication between the CPU and the memory. So that is all about the tri-state buffer. Do remember the main purpose of the tri-state buffer is to provide isolation 
when multiple devices are connected to a shared bus. So in this session, from all the different interfacing components of 8085 microprocessor, we learned about the tri-state buffer. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to learn about the remaining interfacing components. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.